Hello and welcome to this sixth webcast in our series of webcasts on Rapid Deploy version 4.0 basics. And today we're going to look at continuous delivery and we're going to build on the previous projects and previous webcasts that you will have seen so far. And if you haven't uh, taken the time to go and look at those previous webcasts, I strongly encourage you to do so because what we're going to do today is really going to cement and build on those and if you haven't viewed those then uh, I am not sure that you're going to get a, a huge amount out of this uh, webcast. So today we're going to follow four steps really in the agenda. We're going to configure Rapid Deploy. We already have Rapid Deploy running with the WebSphere project in that we did in the last time. Uh, we're going to add another project to pull the ear file from Jenkins into Rapid Deploy. Uh, we could have configured Jenkins to do the push. Uh, I've just done it that way around. It doesn't really matter. Um, we're then going to go and look at Jenkins and configure a pre-configured Jenkins that we have that is currently being used just for doing continuous integration to add the rapid deploy plugin steps in our job to allow us to do continuous delivery as well. And when we've got them both configured together, we're going to change some code in our subversion repository, and that could be any SCM repository. We're going to have that then automatically run our build and then our deployment following that. And then we're going to at the end check that it got deployed. Now, I'm going to give you a quick overview of that again in a diagram. So We've got our Jenkins server that we already have configured for doing continuous integration. So we make a change and it gets automatically built. We're then going to make a post build action or a post build step, in fact, initially. First of all, just to kick off a job in Rapid Deploy to pull that EAR file that's just been built in Jenkins into the correct project in Rapid Deploy. Uh, we're then going to create a package on that project using a second REST API call and that's going to call that uh, project that we used in the previous webcast and just create a package with the latest ear file in it and then on the third REST API call from the Jenkins server we're going to call through again to that project but this time with a deploy action to actually run the deployment to our WebSphere server. Now. We could, of course, add further actions to do further deployments to our downstream environments in Jenkins, and therefore we could control our continuous delivery and our route to live in Jenkins, or we could do it in Rapid Deploy. Today I'm just going to do one deployment just to show you how it works. You can then build those together yourselves to create your full end-to-end -end deployment plan from development through to production. Okay, well let's get started with that then first thing I'm going to do is download the copy project that enables us to copy the ear file from the Jenkins server to the Rapid Deploy server. So let's go into Rapid Deploy. Let's go to example Rapid Deploy projects. Scroll down to the continuous delivery with subversion Jenkins and Rapid Deploy and download the copy JPET store app, a zip file. Okay, you can read through this as well, gives a little bit more information. So, now we're going to log into our Rapid Deploy server. I'm gonna go and have a look at our projects and you can see we've got the previous project there that we used to just do a deployment from Rapid Deploy to WebSphere. I've tested that just a moment ago and that's working fine. So now I'm going to upload that new project. This really is just so I don't have to type any of this in. Uh, I'm going to change the name of this to demo, match the other one. Okay, so we have that project. We've got some configuration we will need to do here. 
Let's just go and have a look at it. So we've got a, a wget task here. Now you can see we've got some data dictionary items. We are going to need to configure those. So uh, and we're also going to need to change where the project is saved to. As I had a demo on the end there. So I'm going to go into the data dictionary. I'm going to configure these um, items. So we need the ear file URL. URL for the username. And then the password. Save that. Save this project. OK. So now we've created the project to copy the uh, ear file from the Jenkins server after it's been built to uh, the uh, WebSphere project in the Rapid Deploy server. So let me just check the orchestration again. Yep, everything there looks to be OK. So now what we'll do is we'll go over onto the Jenkins server and configure that to talk to Rapid Deploy. Okay, so here I have the uh, JPET store demo in my Jenkins server. So I'm going to go into configure, and I'm now going to add the post build steps and post build actions to allow this to talk to Rapid Deploy. So we'll add a post build step here. We'll uh, add the rapid deploy deployment uh, project deploy step. So we need the server URL, which is and we're also going to need to have a authentication token. And for that, we will uh, go into terminal. You need to go into your rapid deploy installation and then go into the tools uh, folder and in there you'll see some encryption tools so I'm going to run the web service encryptor uh, I'm logging in as MV admin and the password is MV admin of course you should change that so we get a web service token here and this is a token that you'll use for any web service calls into rapid deploy with that username. So I'm going to paste that in there and I'm going to load the projects. We can see that's the first project that comes up. So uh, that's perfect actually. That's completely configured as we want it. So we're calling the JPET store project. We have one environment for that project uh, and we're going to deploy the latest package name. In fact, we need to go and remember when we go back into Rapid Deploy to create a package for that. It's a dummy package, but we need to have one. It's not really using it. OK, so I'm going to apply that. And then we're going to add uh, another post build action here. So we're going to do a package now. So we'll copy that URL. We'll copy this. load the projects again. And this time we actually want the WebSphere project. And we're going to create a deployment package of the WebSphere project. So we'll uh, apply that. So this now is going to create a package that we can deploy and then we need to add another post build action to run that deployment. So here we go, we're going to add that. I'll just put the authentication token in there again. I'll copy the URL. Again, we'll load the projects. Again, we'll choose the WebSphere projects project. This is the, the target environment that we deployed to last time, and we want to deploy the latest package. So we'll apply that. Okay, and that's us configured 
in Jenkins. And you'll need to remember, as I said, on the Copy J Pet Store to actually create a package. So I've got a package there. Okay, so now we're going to go into Eclipse. And here in Eclipse, I'm already configured uh, the J Pet Store application talking to Subversion. So I'm going to make a change to this uh, color to, let's make it, I don't know. Okay. Now if we look at the um, running application, the JPET Store demo app, just refresh that. We've still got this yellow color that we deployed uh, last time. That's what's running in WebSphere, and here's the WebSphere application server. Okay, so there's that cluster running. So this is what we're going to update. Okay, so let's go back over here. We've got a color, a sort of a greeny color. I'm going to check that in. Okay, and that check-in should now when it's completed, so that's now checked into Subversion. Uh, what that's going to actually do, is if we go back to the uh, Jenkins project, we're doing a check every two minutes. So we're polling the SCM every two minutes. This is where it's uh, the location, the JPET store application. It's going to do a clean install, and then it's going to run our post build steps. And we'll be able to see that running. If we, uh, I mean, it's actually already started here. You can see that. So we can go and have a look at the console output in the um, the builders running through. Run some tests. Builds the JPET store here file. The successful build. Now it's archiving off those. Uh, build files. So uh, we can see now that it's um, invoked the rapid deploy project uh, task. So it's copying the JPET store to the rapid deploy 40 demo. We go and have a look in rapid deploy. May have, so there you go, that's actually still running. It's doing the wget to pull that file from the rapid deploy server, which it's then completed. That's finished. Now you can immediately see the next job has started. So if we go back to JPET store, let's refresh that page. Uh, you can see it's running the um, it's running the job. So it finished the uh, build. It then uh, created the copy. Or ran the copy. And that's this task, all of these tasks here. So all the logging is brought back and recorded in the Jenkins server as well as in the rapid deploy server. It's now calling the um, package builder to create the package. So it creates a deployment package. This is the name of the package that it's created. Watch this page again. We can get these proxy errors on Jenkins. It's refreshing the page. Okay, that's completed, and now it's running the actual uh, deployment. So if we go back into Rapid Deploy, we can see that that deployment is running. We can uh, certainly view the logs. You see it's uh, copying the uh, 
new jar file, the OO3 jar file that we just built. It's being copied over to the target server. And it's going to deploy that to the server. And what it's also doing, of course, is it's inside the WebSphere deployment task because we haven't changed that. Not only is it deploying the new ear file with the change that we've made to the configuration, it's also, uh, if we had made any configuration changes to the cluster or the virtual host or any of the other WebSphere configuration, that would also be being updated at the same time. Now, we haven't actually made any changes to that, so it's just going to leave everything as it is. OK. So we can view this log running here. At the moment, it's doing the um, replacing the data dictionary items with their correct values for this environment. And it's expanding the ear file. Then it's uh, done the search and replace. And then it's uh, collapsed the ear file. And now it's doing the WebSphere cluster state change task. It's, uh, it's stopping the cluster. And then it's going to do the deployment task. shouldn't take too long. You can see all the actions that it's performing in here. Right now as it's doing the deployment we ought to be able to refresh this and see that it's actually not reachable because it's actually stopped that cluster now. It's uninstalling the old enterprise application and deploying the new enterprise application. See the installation there has started. It's now completed, synchronizing the node with the deployment manager. Okay, so it's now checking that that JPET store application has been deployed and is synchronized. It's doing a distribution status check to make sure that it's synchronized. Once that synchronization status check has come back from all the nodes to say yes, it's synchronized across all the nodes, move on to the next step. That's starting the cluster. So now it's starting the cluster. We've set uh, the time to allow us to restart the cluster is 300 seconds. Hopefully it won't take that long. Then once that cluster says it's up and running, we ought to be able to just go back and check, see that we have actually changed that application. Okay, so it's now running the integrity check script to make sure that it can get through to the server. It's all completed. So now if I refresh this again, now we see the JPET Store 6 application again, but this time we've got the green background instead of the uh, yellow background. If we go back into Jenkins, you can see that that's also finished and we've also got all of the logging here that we saw in real time in the rapid deploy server we've also got it all configured here in this project now in this uh, I'm just going to refresh that okay and that jobs now showing as complete successful okay so what we've shown here is the ability to integrate Jenkins with Rapid Deploy using the Jenkins Rapid Deploy plugin which has the actions of allowing you to create a package or run a job and we've run two jobs and one create package action to copy the ear file over onto the Rapid Deploy server post build uh, into the WebSphere project and then package that WebSphere project into a new deployable package in this case it was package 003 and then deploy that package to the WebSphere server and we've seen the change uh, that it made.